thank God for the record books. Without them, the recollection of who stood atop the podium will soon get lost in the memories created under the bright stadium lights. But the human interaction had between a fan and writer, that's what really matters. That can stand the test of time and embed that memory into the mind of another for what may be a lifetime to come. I think I want my legacy to be somebody who got a hold of the spotlight that didn't have to win races. I make sure to make a point to take care of each and every one of my fans because you never know whose life you're gonna change and you never know who you're gonna make, you know, a professional supercrosser. And not only can you change somebody's life, but dude, without them, I wouldn't have a career. I mean, that's how I made my life is having fun, ripping on a dirt bike, and taking care of the people that care about me. It's funny because I'd say it's about five months ago, it, you know, and it took me my whole life to think about it. And it's like 0.001% of people that get to experience like flying through the air on a 200 pound dirt bike. There's nothing else like that in the world, right? And what it does to me is like, when I can crank one off the triple, dude, it's like unbelievable. It puts a smile on my face ear to ear and it just makes you want to say, woo! You know what I mean? Like every time and there's just, and there's something about cranking the shit out of a dirt bike that can just take unhappiness, you know, a bad lunch, <laughs> you know, a bad drive, whatever you want to call it, dude, it's gone as soon as that happens. And, you know, that's that's what I love about dirt bikes. And I think that's what we all love about dirt bikes. Is as soon as we get on a bike, you are not in reality, you're on your dirt bike. There is absolutely nothing else you're thinking about in the world. There's not a place you'd rather be. There's nothing else like it. You know, there's nothing that you can do to replicate what happens on a dirt bike.
I'm dead. I've always had an ear for music ever since I was a little kid. And what music does to me is very similar to what riding a dirt bike does. And it just takes me away. I wouldn't be where I'm at without music. I don't know if it's lengthened my riding career. I mean, yeah, I guess it, I guess it has. Because I've made so much money off of my music that I don't know if I would have been able to do what I've done on my dirt bike without having that money from the music. Because like, if I didn't have the money that I made from my music, I wouldn't be able to spend the time that I get to on my dirt bike and the quality of time. I think one of the biggest things that people don't understand about, you know, being a professional in Supercross is how much of a routine and how much time and effort it takes to make a space in your life to be able to improve. Because like, there was a point where like, I literally stopped and was like, why am I risking my life? And I can't even make enough money to do what I need to do every day. You know what I'm saying? I'm driving in like a, a little tiny Ford Ranger and I barely, I'm jumping from house to house. I barely can figure out life. I'm, you know, we're making track entry fees daily, but like my tune core would just fill up with money every month and I didn't do anything. You know, it's like riding a dirt bike was so hard to do. And then making music, it was just like collecting more and more and more each month. And you're like, you know, do I want to get hurt anymore? But the problem with that was music was always cool to me, but it was never as cool as Brad Miller. But I'm always coming back around. I'm always going back around. When I went to a Supercross race, I met Jeremy McGrath, and Jeremy was the one who really, I think, flipped a switch in my brain and, and made me think that I was gonna be a professional Supercross racer when I grew up. I seen him and I said, that's what I wanna do. And I met him and he said, what's up? And he was like the coolest dude on the track. He was the coolest dude in the pits. And I've taken that to heart and I make sure that each and every fan that I see I, I act like I'm human. I, I give them, you know, a part of my day. I give them time and, uh, and I make them feel like, you know, this is sick. You know, it's not horrible to be a professional Supercross racer. It's actually like the coolest thing in the world. This dude's having a good time. He's living his best life and uh, he's having fun. And I think that's important to everybody because I think we lose sight of how blessed we are and and how fortunate we are to ride dirt bikes for a living. It's unbelievable. When you see that kid walk away and he's yelling seven deuce deuce, and then uh, you know, 30 minutes later, you see him screaming seven deuce deuce and your song over the side as you're going through the tunnel. I mean, there's nothing like that. And dude, I get, I get Instagram messages all day long that say, Adam, I just wanna say thank you so much for keeping your spirits up and just having a good time. You know, I've been going through depression. I've been going through this. I've been going through a broken leg, whatever it might be. They just say, thank you so much for, you know, how upbeat you are. And it's just unbelievable that I can 
that I had the power to take somebody from that place and bring them to a happier place that can, you know, change their life in the future. It's, it's unbelievable. I got to live it up, live it down. World travels real fast in a small town. Made a couple wrong turns, too many to count. But I always come back around. Took a couple detours, got stuck on some twice. I think I've done better than just making it, for sure. Um, I wish I was doing better, but. I think that if you don't think that, you know, you're probably not trying to do anything. Um, I mean, I have a ride with ATP Suzuki. Um, you know, I don't, I don't pay for any of my stuff. I get paid to ride a dirt bike. I mean, I think that's, that's pretty much making it, <laughs> you know. And uh, I have a studio like this, and I get to make music, and I pretty much get to do whatever the hell I want. You know, I'm, I am living the dream.